Welcome to Missions Monday with Pastor Brent Oliver from Delphi First Assembly of God and Kokomo Southview Church. Today, we are blessed to share with you God's news of what is going on in various parts of the world. Well, hello. Hey, this is Brent Oliver, and with me today is Scott Pongratz. Scott is a missionary, and uh, he's a missionary in South Africa. Uh, Scott and I have known each other for quite a long time. Yeah. And uh, uh, since he was a little kid, I don't think yeah. I would. Uh, but uh, we're here interviewing him today for Missions Monday. So as we're talking to missionaries that serve around the world, uh, we get a chance to talk to Scott and hear a little bit about what they're doing. Um, so, Scott, welcome today. Awesome. Thank you, Pastor Brent. Thanks for the opportunity and uh, look forward to our time together. Tell us, uh, obviously, you're, right now you're back in uh United States and preparing uh, for the time that you're able to go back. Once you go back, once you go back, tell us what you're going to be a part of, what's going to be happening. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So we, uh, we've been serving in South Africa for uh, a little bit next month will be 11 years already. And um, our area of ministry that we've been working with and in for the last 10 year, 11 years is church planting. And so um, we have partnered with local pastors to be able to plant churches uh, where they're at. Um, they always come to us and they say, hey, I need you to help me with this, or I don't know how to do this. Or, and so we basically have created a, a network of church planters that are partnering with one another to be able to plant the church uh, throughout South Africa uh, in the villages, um, mo- mainly in the village areas in South Africa. Uh, but so that's what we've been doing the last 11 years. Uh, but at the end of our last term, we were praying. And as most missionaries probably do at the end of every term is just say, Lord, uh, we love what we're doing. Is this what you want us to continue to do? Um, you know, because transitioning from on the field to back to the States is a big transition for the family. And so we always take that time months before we leave just to say, God, you know, we're, we want to stay. This is we're happy. We're content. Um, what does the next term look like? Because mis- as missionaries, we talk about uh, our lives in terms because a four-year term is typically the, the term. Our seven-year-old son, he's, he's already said, so dad, I've got what, two more terms with you guys? I'm like, son, you're seven. You don't have to worry about that kind of stuff, you know? So, but as, so as missionaries, we pray about that. We say, Lord, okay, what do you want for us? And so the, at the end of our last term, we were praying and, and the Lord says, well, I want you to plant a church. And we we're like, God, we are planting churches. And uh, he said, no, I, I really feel like you guys need to be the lead planters and plant an urban tribes church. And so uh, let me tell you real quick what urban tribes is. So urban tribes is a church planning initiative uh, with the Summers of God World Missions, where Africa is the fastest urbanizing continent in the world. And they're saying by the year 2030 that over 70 percent of Africa will be urbanized. And so basically what that looks like is people are leaving the villages, they're coming to the city centers, looking for a better life, looking for education, um, better water, electricity, all of those things that, you know, when you think about Africa and you think of the bush, people are leaving that to come to the city centers uh, around the continent of Africa. And so within AGWM Africa, we were like, how do we get ahead of head of the game and get churches planted in these city centers across the continent? So that we're there as people are coming and searching that we can have a church that can reach them in their time of need. Because what we know is, is people are coming for, like we said, education, uh, better jobs, better way of living and everything. But what they're really searching for is the answer to life. And so um, as we were praying, the Lord said, no, I want you to plant a church and we want you to, I want you to plant a church in Cape Town. And so Cape Town is the city that we've been living in. That's been our home base, our entire missionary career. And um, so the Lord said, I want you to plant a church, be the lead pastors. And so when we head back um, in August or early September, we're hoping uh, that we will be the lead planters of a brand new urban tribes church plant. And so um, we're hoping to be in a in the city center of Cape Town and be able to have a church that's well established and there to be able to reach people as they're coming in. Um, You know, there's there's a lot of times where. Uh, The national church that we work with, um, they do village church very well. And, um, you know, I'm I'm sure, Pastor Brent, your your church people are like, you know, if it gets more than an hour and a half, maybe two hours, like they're ready to be done with church. Well, in Africa, um, you haven't even started preaching if you haven't done worship for two hours. 
<laughs> and so um, to be a church that's an urban setting church, uh-huh. to have church for two, three, four hours just doesn't work. And so the national church is saying, we do, we do village church well, but teach us how to do urban church. Mm. And so we're going in, we're bringing the national church along with us to partner with us, and us to partner with them in this relationship to plant this church and to be a, uh, just a, a training space to teach these guys to be able to do urban church so that they can go out from there and expand out and plant churches all over South Africa. Yeah. Wow. Um. Obviously, you haven't really gotten into this yet, but what do you expect to see the transition from the, the, the villages, the bush uh, coming in? Then, what do you expect to see people dealing with uh, as they try to infiltrate into the urban areas? Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of times uh, and we even see this in America uh, when the refugees from Africa are coming to America, um, mm-hmm. they don't understand that they can drink water from the tap. Um, you know, they're so used to having to go get a bucket and go to dirty water and bring it back and filter it and boil it if they even have the capacity to do that. And so one Boy, of the ways that we see so us, clear. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so one of the ways that we see us being able to help is as people are coming in, we can help them train them in those things like how to, you know, drinking water is okay or you know, what, what do you do when you go for a job interview and just basic business, basic life skills sure, that sure. living in the bush that they haven't had to learn. Yeah. And so if we can set up training courses and those kind of things, to be able to reach people in their time of need. Um, and then through that, allowing us the opportunity to be able to share the gospel. Um, so meeting them at their need, but through that, then sharing the gospel is really what the, the, what we feel like our, um, our, our niche will be as a church. Uh, and you expect those numbers to be pretty significant coming in, right? Yeah, yeah, it's very significant. Um, how do you think that's going to, the the mix of people that have already been living in the urban setting versus the people that are coming in? Do you see that, the ability for those to mix? Yeah, I do, uh, but it's going to take work. Uh-huh. Um, and I think that the church is where that, that can, that, that nucleus can happen or that that fusion can happen between those people that are coming in that have nothing and those people that already have something that are already well established Mm -hmm. because you know the church and the vision that god's given us for the church is to be a racially reconciling generationally church uh, thriving in the heart of the city and so um generationally you know that you have the older people the younger people um you know diverse diverse diversity as far as the demographics of people so to haves versus the have nots. So I feel like the need for us as a church is, is going to be very huge for us to, to teach in the church and, and, and implore the people that are coming to realize that the gospel's for everybody. Yeah. It's not yeah. for the haves. It's not just for the have nots. It's not, it's, it's, it's for everybody. And right. Right. for us to, for those that have, to be able to pour into those that don't have Mm -hmm. Um, my, my dream would be is that as those that have are coming to the church and they, they really understand God's heart and Jesus's heart for people that they go, you know what, pastor Scott, like I own my own business and I see all these people coming in, like I can start hiring people and and bringing them in. So for the church to be the nucleus where that infusion happens between those that have versus have not and the, and the business owner goes to the, you know, and they're praying for, praying for each other at the altar. Sure. And the guy says, sure. you know what, I'm praying, I need a job. And the, and the guy that's praying for me able to say, you know what, I have a business and I can hire you or the person who doesn't have anything. And mm-hmm. the guy who has a business comes to the front for prayer. And the guy who has nothing is praying for the guy and the guy is saying, you know, I want my business to grow and I need, you know, this and that. And the guy who has nothing is praying for the businessman. Mm-hmm. I mean, to me, that's what true church, true Christianity, oh, yeah. true authentic yeah. Christianity yeah. looks like. And so that's what our, our heart will be for the church. We had business people that own some housing, apartments yeah. and stuff. Yeah. What an opportunity to be able to bring people in and say, I have a place for you. Yeah. Um, you know, as you're talking, it almost sounds to me very different, but yet somewhat similar. Um, like Chi Alpha, every year you have new students that are coming in. So, um, you know, they have a, a party. Um, you know, they're going to serve food and, and they're going to do things. Hey, if you're new, come. We are, we want to welcome you. And 
Yeah. Um, and out of that, you build relationships and out of those relationships, then everything else begins to take place. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. That's, that's, and we're, we're so excited about it and can't wait to get there. And obviously because of COVID and everything else, we've been in the States for so long, yeah. you know, like we're, we're, we're like ready to go back, itching to go back. <laughs> I had actually had a conversation this morning with one of our local guys on the ground. Uh, his name's Michael Mondi and he's part of our lead staff and he mm-hmm. lives in Cape town. And, you know, I was telling him, I said, Hey, it's still looking like probably end of August, early September. And he goes, pastor Scott, he goes, we can't wait for you guys to get here. Uh, he goes, we're so ready to get this church going. Uh, we have people that are actually contacting Michael and saying, Hey, what are you guys up to? Like, I haven't heard from you in a while. And he goes, we're getting ready to plant this church. And uh, they're like, we want to be a part of it. And so people are contacting him out of the blue that he hasn't talked to forever. And like, we're, he's like, you need to get here, Pastor Scott. We need to get this thing going. So yeah. the Lord's already beginning to stir in that. Oh, that's and, cool. um, so it's just, we're so excited and can't wait to get there and, and to be, to be doing what God's called us to do. Sure. Sure. Sounds like a strategic time. We, our, our prayer for you is God really, uh, as he's already seen to go before you and things are starting to, to take place. You're not even there yet. Yeah. It'll be really fun to hear you know, how this all plays out and the people that come in, that's got to be an interesting dynamic yes. coming from the bush. You know, uh, I'm thinking, here's why you, the dog that you see coming down the street, you don't shoot and kill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't do that here. You don't yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, Hey, I appreciate you spending time with us this morning. Absolutely. And, uh, this will be uh, shown uh, on our church uh, YouTube page and Facebook page as well. And uh, people will be interested in what's going on, just another part of the world. Uh, appreciate you being with us today, Scott. Thank you so much. Absolutely. It's joy for us to be here. And thank you, Delphi First Assembly, for sending us and allowing to be your hands and feet to the people of South Africa. You guys are part of who we are and part of what we're doing. And uh, we're just an extension of, of your hands to the people of South Africa. So we say thank you. Well, and we love that. Uh, it's, it's an opportunity. You know, when Jesus said, you know, to, uh, to make disciples, he said, uh, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the other most parts of the earth. And so yeah. uh, not everybody can go, but those who don't go can certainly be a part of praying for and sending those. And yeah. so it's our privilege. It's our pleasure to be joined together with you. And uh, we look forward to hearing what God does. Amen. Thanks. Thank you so much. God bless you today. You too. This has been brought to you by Delphi First Assembly of God and Kokomo Southview Church. To contact us or send us your prayer request, testimony of answered prayer, or Bible questions, please see the information on the screen. May God's salvation through Jesus Christ overflow into your life with His joy. God bless until we see you again.